If you've never done a stage design that involves LED tape, it can seem really daunting. What kind of lights are you supposed to buy? How do you connect it to your lighting console or your software so you can control it? And how do you wire all this stuff together. We recently finished a new stage design at our church, which was our first go at using LED tape as the basis of the design. So I'm gonna walk you through all the equipment that you're going to need, how it connects together, and even some ideas on how to make the design modular and future-proof. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the worship leader that has to do it all. If you're trying to figure out how to do all the little extra things that come along with leading a worship ministry, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it, and we'll be here to help every week. So basically, we have LED tape in these diffuser bars with these connectors attached at the end that runs into this terminal block, and then we run thermostat wire down to this dimmer pack. This dimmer pack is what connects to our lighting software, but it also needs an external power supply. Let's start with the LED tape itself. This tape comes rolled up like this, and then there's this sticky tape on the back that allows you to place it anywhere you want. Now, there's two things that you need to know when you are shopping for LED tape. One is that it comes in different sizes. What we have here in this diffuser bar, this is 10 millimeter. That's what we use, but there's also a 12 millimeter and that becomes really important when you start buying diffuser bars like this one or if you need to add little connectors at the end, all that stuff has to match. Also, this tape is RGBW, which means that besides just having the typical red, green, blue, there is a dedicated white all throughout this strip of tape. Here's why this is important. You have four channels. You have the red, the green, the blue, and the white, and then there's this common wire that carries the, the 12 volts electricity for total of five wires, which means when you start shopping for connectors or dimmer packs, they have to match as well. If you just go with RGB, that's fine. You just need to make sure that everything, the connectors, the dimmer packs, match that they have three channels and a total of four wires. But all the products that we're gonna recommend are gonna be for that 10 millimeter tape and the dedicated white channel. So you have four channels and a total of five wires. When you buy a roll of LED tape, there are connectors already on both ends. And depending on your design, that might be enough. But we wanted to create an assortment of three foot fixtures and six foot fixtures. The tape that we bought was 13 feet long, which meant that after we cut all the sections, there would be a middle section that wouldn't have any connectors. So that's where these come in. These come in packs of five, and they have a little adapter that goes in here that switches it really quickly from male to female, depending on what you need to plug it into. But they have to be soldered on to the LED tape, and that's probably the hardest part of this entire build. And if you're not comfortable with a soldering iron, I would just find someone within the church that is. But here's what you need to know. Anywhere you see these exposed terminals, this is a place where you can cut the tape. However, every 18 inches or so, you'll see these same terminals, but with this silver metal. If you're going to solder connectors, this is where you want to cut. These connectors at this point are pre-tinned, meaning that they come with solder already on them, and all you have to do is heat it with a soldering iron and place the bare wires of the connectors onto the terminal. Let's talk about these diffuser bars. For one, it gives something to actually put the tape in. It kind of makes this tape its own fixture, but it also has this piece of plastic on the front that softens the light. It makes the tape look more like a bar of light instead of seeing each of the individual LED lights. We were able to find these bars in three feet and in six feet, so we kept that in mind when we were coming up with the design. So the end result is, is that we have this fixture that has a plug on it that can easily plug into anything else, or we can switch out that bar for another one if it goes bad on a Sunday morning. We can use these for future designs, which may makes this really modular and future-proof. So now let's talk about these frames. We've got another connector that receives the plug from the LED fixture that goes into this terminal block mounted on the frame. Then on the other side of this terminal block, we connect the wires 
that run to the dimmer packs. We use thermostat wire. It's the same kind of wire that you would run to connect your air conditioner or your heating unit to the control panel in your house. You can just ask for it, thermostat wire. It's the same size, the same gauge, that is perfect for 12 volt electronics like this. And there's five wires inside, which is exactly what we need. The thermostat wire runs down the frame to these dimmer packs. This is how your lighting console communicates to the LED bars that we just made. You plug in your DMX right here, and then there's room for eight separate fixtures with four DMX channels each for a total of 32 channels for this dimmer device. By the way, these green plugs come out. So I think it's easier to wire up the plug and then plug it into the dimmer instead of trying to wire them straight into the box. Now here's the crazy thing. You actually have to wire in your own power supply. The dimmers don't have a power supply. This is gonna convert the normal 120 AC volts that comes out of your wall into a 12 volt DC current, which is what the LED tape wants. Now this power supply breaks out power to three separate devices. It can run three separate things, but the dimmers actually want four. So what that means is you can either run six of the eight channels on the dimmer with this one power supply and you're fine. Or if you want to run all eight channels like we do, you actually need two of these power supplies. So for example, with this center section, we evenly distributed the power. Each power supply sends power to half of the channels on this dimmer. Something else to watch out for, this dimmer pack puts the wires in this order. Common, red, green, blue, and white. This little jumper also puts the wires in the same order, but the LED tape, the LED tape is common, green, red, blue, and white. So at some point we had to switch the wires and we chose to do it at the dimmer packs. When you're piecing together all this DIY equipment from China and all over, it's just something that you have to watch out for that not everyone puts things in the same order. Now, I didn't talk much about these fixtures. This is actually a homemade fixture. And if you wanna learn more about that, tap on the video at the top. Or if you wanna see another stage design that we have done, tap on the video in the bottom. I'll see you in the next video.